Hello Dan, this is the testing of your LS400 98-2001 UZ BBTI into a, a Toyota Altezza 3SGE, that's an RS200. Uh, it is a plug and play harness, so it's all adapted to be completely plug and play in the Altezza. Uh, do excuse this bit of a mess, I'm adapting from IS200 to Altezza, so you'll see I've got little batches in between all of these connectors over here. Uh, at the end I will obviously have the photos of the entire harness and it will show you how this is all orientated inside the ECU box. But in a nutshell you've got your three body plugs on this side over here so they'll be towards the front. You've got your three engine harness plugs here which will obviously be orientated towards the back. These will tuck away and this will go down and tuck away behind the white frame there. So that's your Atomu device to as you're running manual. Uh, there's your converter to device to convert your MPX signals from LS400 to Alteza. Okay. And obviously here's your main branch of your harness over here. This will obviously be running along here to the back of the engine. So as you can see, it runs towards the back of the engine over there. So following that up to there, you're then gonna have your main plastic piece that's gonna bolt on the back here. Uh, I'm using a 3UZ engine, so there, I'll show you the three bolt holes. They're obviously missing on this engine, but they will be present on yours. So you've got this bolt hole at the back here. You've got that mounting point on the back there. And then you've got that mounting point over there. Okay, so coming from this back piece of plastic, you've got your plug right at the top here. So this is the one that's going down into your V-bank here. This is for your starter solenoid and your knock sensors. You obviously also have your main uh, power cable for your starter motor coming out there as well. So that'll obviously go over to the battery over there, exactly like you have it here. It is obviously quite long. We've left it because obviously we don't know how long you want it to be. You can obviously cut it and shorten it and so on to reach nicely over there because it is quite a short distance over there. All right. And then also coming out the back here, We've got the earth straps here, which bolt onto the back of the cylinder head here. We've got the lambda sensor, which goes down there. Now there is a little metal heat shield that normally lives here. Please don't remove that, because that, that's what protects this little plug and everything from obviously touching the exhaust and melting away. Uh, and then obviously with the J160, we've got that little gearbox harness section coming down along here. So you've got your speed sensor at the back there. Now as the J160 has a different reverse plug from the IS200, we've done a DTM plug and we've got the other end over here with two wires just so you can cut off the original one and splice those in. Uh, it's just cheaper doing that than actually trying to get a plug from Toyota. Uh, right, so at the back plastic here, I'm going to also send you a photograph of what it looks like underneath. We have changed the plugs because they were broken unfortunately, but what we've done is we've made the two different plugs two different colors so you know which one goes on which knock sensor. Right, so moving on from the back here, we'll start over this side over here. So it's gonna bend up the top here. You've got your plastic over here, which mounts with two bolt holes over there. And coming over here, out of the back sort of cavity over there, we're gonna have injector seven and coil seven coming out there. Moving forward to the next hole, you're gonna have coil five, you're gonna have injector five. Moving along to the next section over there, and this one you're gonna have three, so you're gonna have coil three and injector three, and you're gonna have your cam sensor over there. Uh, coming out the front here, this is gonna be your noise filter. Along your intake over here, there'll be a little gray thing that this will just plug into, and that bolts onto the intake over there. Coming out of here, obviously we come out the plastic over there, we come to the front here, and then we're gonna break out into coil one, injector one, it's also going to break out to go to your oil control valve for your left bank, that's for your VVTI. Coming out of here, we're going to branch over to here to your throttle body and that's going to go to your pedal position sensor over there because obviously this is drive by wire. And then coming down here, we're going to break out to one of the two plugs into your throttle body. I'm just going to now move around to the front of the engine to carry on for the rest of it. So again here, we've got this coming out to this plug over here. The harness makes its way through here. It's gonna come out to plug into here on your throttle body over there. So that's your drive-by wire motor and your clutch. That's your TPS. Coming down along here, it's gonna break out again and it's gonna to go to your cam sensor. You'll see there's little holes here and here that normally has little clips in it and that holds the harness down like that. Obviously I don't do it every time on the testing harness here. Coming down here, you've got another breakout point over here. It's gonna go over to your aircon pump. If you're not using aircon, you can just tuck this obviously out the way. It also breaks out to go to your oil pressure. Now in your case with the Alteza, you're gonna be using the Alteza oil pressure sensor, not the switch. Um, you obviously are LS400, so your oil filter housing is coming straight out here and that's behind there. So you'll see in the top here, there's a hole where you're sort of pushing the crank sensor and the oil through there. And then it comes down into there. So obviously this is where your air compound would normally be right here. And then you just pull out your oil here to come to the back over here and then you carry on bringing it down here, 
where it goes to the crank sensor there and this obviously keeps it away from all the fan belts and everything through the back here and in our case obviously because we're using an LS430 our oil pressure switches over here now the Altezza oil pressure sensor and this is exactly the same plug luckily so it's nice and straightforward so that'll sort that thing out and you'll actually have the oil pressure on your dash okay so that's that side over there pretty well covered coming around to the back over here we've got the black plastic section over here and as we come out the first section over here we're going to have uh, injector 8 and coil 8 we're going to move a bit more forward we have another breakout here which is going to go to your ACIS vacuum solenoid valve connector and obviously to injector 6 and coil 6 and then coming further along we have another breakout point here which is going to go to your cam sensor coil 2 and injector 2 Coming a bit further along here, and we have another breakout, which is going to go to injector two and coil two. Sorry, that's four and that's two. And also breaking out to go to your oil control valve. And finally down there to your engine coolant temp sensor, which is living down in there. Coming a bit further, we're going to break out again, and this is going up to your MAF sensor. Obviously, this is a 3UZ MAF, hence the reason why we've got a little sort of adapter harness between the two of them. It is different wiring. If you plug these in, you're going to end up breaking the intake air temperature sensor circuit because of the way they're wired differently. You should have a bullet style uh, in, uh, mass airflow sensor in there. So, and again, once we've broken down into here, it's going to come down here and it's going to go into the alternator, the three pin plug there. We've got your low oil pressure sensor, which is going to go in here. Obviously, you've got a front sump. This is LS430 with a mid slash rear sump. And then lastly, you've got your lambda sensor that's coming all the way down there. And you've got your bracket on there where it bolts on like that. Okay. So that's the entire layer of the harness. Uh, hopefully nice and clear and easy. It just makes a U shape. You just drop it on and you start plugging stuff in. Uh, everything is almost organized in a way that you shouldn't be able to plug everything in into the wrong place. Um, okay. So... What are we going to be testing today? Obviously, we're going to be testing things like the ambient temperature, charge lights, reverse. I can't do the oil pressure because I've only got an IS200 or an IS300 cluster. I don't have an Altezza one. But we obviously, we've tested all the wire, make sure it's going to the correct place for you. Uh, we're going to be testing the reverse signal by bridging the reverse pin just to make sure we hear the beeping noise when that comes on. Uh, then we're going to go to the OBD2 machine to make sure that's communicating from the plug inside the car as it should be. Uh, then we'll test the fuel pump relay via the tech stream just so you show that's working and your fuel pump is controlled by the ecu i do have a good video on exactly how the fuel pump systems work so if you are interested in ex more information on that please feel free to find that video uh, then what we'll do is we'll test the ac clutch so basically we're going to go into tech stream activate the ac we're going to hear the relay click over there which would then cause the ac pump to activate so as long as the whole system is plumbed and incorrectly everything should be fine uh, once we've done all of those, those are what I call the non-starting test, so that just goes through there. Then we're going to start the vehicle up, and part of that is we're going to be testing the drive-by-wire, so we're going to rev it up and make sure that it revs up. Start a circuit, again, nice and simple. The fact that it starts, we know that works. Uh, the ACIS, or Acoustic Control Induction System, that's this little valve at the back here. So after we start it, that's going to close. Okay, so we make sure that that works. Then we're gonna test all the oil control valves or both of them using the tech stream. So you're gonna hear the engine note completely change as it sort of advances and retards the cam as part of the test. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go one by one, unplug all the injectors just to make sure that every single cylinder is firing as it should do. Uh, taco, we're gonna go look at the dash. Now this taco will read slightly lower because obviously it's a six cylinder IS200. Uh, I'll test it as a four cylinder, which takes the exact signal that comes out of the one you said VVTI straight without any sort of adjustment. And then we'll be looking at the coolant temp because that's one of the items that gets translated from MPX over to the uh, work on the actual IS200-300 slash Altezza clusters. All right. So uh, to get to the testing, what we're going to do is, again, plug and play. So you're just going to jump in your car after you plugged everything in. Uh, you're going to switch it on. As soon as we do that, we can see we've got our battery light there. You can see we've got our check engine light coming on there. Everything is working. Our coolant temp is actually already up because obviously we've been through the testing already and the engine's a bit warm. Just going to sort out the OBD2 there. So let's go around the front and let's go and take a look at the ambient temperature. So inside the vehicle, you can see the outside temp is reading 18 degrees, so that's absolutely fine. Uh, we've already been through the charge light that we can see over there and the check engine light. Right, so let's go on to reverse. So I'm just going to take this little wire here. Just going to grab your reverse plug. And we are going to bridge it. Okay. So I've just bridged that over there. 
and you can hear that annoying reverse beep. So we know that circuit is all okay and working as it should do. Right, so for the speedo, what we do is we've got a little signal generator here. Uh, so we plug it all into here because we know it gets a 12 volts of ground and the signal. So we're testing 12 volts ground and signal over there. So all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to plug this in and put it into test mode. Just give me a second. Okay. Right, so we've got a flashing light over there. Apologies, it's part of one of the adaption harnesses over there that I've got to make between Altezza and IS200. So we've got that signal being generated there. Obviously, you can see our speedo is showing zero. And as I connect it up, there you go. So that's all directly to there. So super happy with that. We know the 12 volts, the ground, and the signal is working exactly as it should. So we'll go from there. Right, so that was the Speedo OBD2. So obviously we've got this plugged in to your standard one, which will be in your driver's side footwell over here. And we're just gonna go into function and we're gonna go system select, just so we can see, yeah, it's picking up as LS400. Obviously we're gonna go into the powertrain management. Right, so we're happy with that. Right, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the fuel pump relay. So we're gonna go into active test. So I know it says fuel pump relay and fuel pump. If you go watch the video, I actually explain what the difference is between those two. Um, try to do things just weirdly. Right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to, and there you can see the fuel pump engaging there. I'm gonna try and move the camera over there to the fuel pump. Fantastic. All right, so that's that done. Next thing we're gonna do is go into the active test. And we're gonna go into AC magnetic clutch relay. And there you go. I'm just gonna move the camera over to the, obviously your AC magnetic clutch relay's in there. I'm just gonna hold the camera there. Okay, fantastic. So the ECU is controlling the AC magnetic clutch relay, no problem at all. Right, so the next thing we want to move on to now is actually physically starting the vehicle up. Uh, I'm going to put my ear protectors on because it is loud, there's no exhaust. So I, I will carry on talking. Usually you guys can hear me, but if not, uh, those are the tests that we're going to carry out one by one. I'll quickly come back to the piece paper, point to them, and then we'll do the test just so you know exactly what we're testing. So I'm just going to put my ear protectors on. Right, so as it's plug and play, we're going to start directly from the key. So let's go for it.
fantastic. Right, so everything is working there. What I'm gonna do now is, obviously you've got OBD2 so you can read all your codes and everything, but on the One UZ BBTI you can also do flash codes as well. So first of all, I'm just gonna put the ignition back on so we can see the check engine light. Now, depending on, I can't remember exactly with the Alteza, but just, if it was a pre-2001, I think yours is a 2000, after 2000, so you're probably not gonna have this diagnostic port in the engine bay by your fuse box there. Uh, but for everybody else, if you do, you can bridge T, C, and E1 inside here. That will then cause the flash codes to come up. If not, you've got the OBD2 plug. Well, both vehicles have the OBD2 plug, and you can bridge pin 4 and 13 with a paper clip or a piece of wire inside there, and that's gonna cause the check engine light to flash and give you all of the codes. So, for now, just because it's easier and I'm right here, I'm gonna use this one over here to get the same result. So again, I'm gonna put it into E1. Okay, and I'm gonna put it into TC. Now, just with the ignition on, as soon as I bridge that, you're gonna see the check engine light's gonna go off, and it's gonna start flashing codes. So it's gonna have one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's 27. We got one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's 29. Okay. I'm not going to keep on doing that. Once you pull the wire out, you'll see the check engine light will just go back to being solid on. Obviously, I can see all of that data in here. So, codes that you are going to have in relation to your swap that will always be there is going to be oxygen sensors, the secondary sensors over there. They don't cause the engine to run in a limp mode. They don't even cause a check engine light, as you can clearly see when it's running. And then we've got SLU, SLT, SLN. Again, because they don't affect performance in any shape or form and they don't cause a check engine light, we just leave them. Otherwise, you have to put resistors in your harness for that. So, those are the five that you'd always have. That's 27, that's 29, okay? And these ones over here, I think you're gonna pick up by our OBD2 machine. Okay, putting it into the diagnostic mode by bridging those pins or bridging that if you've got that, not only gives you the codes, but it also causes the engine to be locked at 10 degrees timing. Now this is a diagnostic thing, to check and see if your timing is out. So rather than having to start pulling all of these covers and everything off and being all complicated, there is timing marks on the engine there. And luckily enough, we've managed to stop the engine exactly where the mark is on the crank pulley. So you've got 0, 5, 10, and 15. So all you'd effectively have to do, bridge those two terminals, put it into diagnostic mode, grab your timing light, put it on coil one over there, your little clamp, start the engine up, and you can check your timing with the timing light. So if your timing is a few degrees off, then you know that the timing is off, then you can actually pull all the covers off and start investigating where the problem lies. It has a slipped tooth, etc., etc. So it's just a really nice, easy test that's nice and simple, just takes five minutes of the timing light and a piece of wire, and you can check whether the timing on your engine is actually correct and as it should be. Okay, so I think that's pretty much it. Uh, obviously at the end we will have a couple of photos to show you before and after of what it looks like when we received it and what it looks like now. Uh, I've gone through everything exactly how it goes onto the engine. The only thing left from your side to do, and we do have your alternator cable uh, wrapped up as well, but you're gonna have your alternator cable which is gonna come from the alternator along the subframe. That's gonna come up into your fuse box over here. This is our cable just for testing purposes. You've got your main starter cable which we've actually used in your case and that is what's bolted down over there. So remember you've got two power wires. You've got the one coming down into your fuse box and you have the one for the main starter. You've got your earth coming down over here, so you'll see that's the cable that you should see as part of your fitting. That goes down to underneath the battery, bolts to the chassis, that provides your ground to everything related to your chassis. Then it goes down and you should have an earth strap that you can then bolt onto the block, okay? So that's the main earth coming from the battery underneath to the block. What we normally do is you've got a little earthing point at the back here. And usually that's, I'm pretty sure that's there on Altesa, but yeah, anywhere on the firewall that you can get at earth, I normally take one from there over to the cylinder head. So you'll see you've got plenty of holes here. And even on this side, although you haven't got the three holes, you still have two holes over here. And that goes along with your two engine earths over there. 
Now, the system runs a deadhead system, which is exactly the same as what the Altezza system runs. So effectively, all you've got to do is put your Altezza fuel pipe directly onto here. That's it. You don't have to change anything on the fuel pump. You don't need to put a return or anything like that. Uh, really, really nice and simple and straightforward. Uh, these on the back, these are not fuel regulators. These are fuel pulsation dampeners, so they absorb all the pulses of when the injectors are firing off as the engine is running. These can be incredibly useful because the screws that are inside here actually raise up when there's fuel pressure. Because obviously the diaphragm in here is what absorbs all the pulsation. So effectively what you can always do is if you're not sure whether your fuel pump is running or not, come to the back of the engine, check these screws. If they are sunk all the way in, then obviously you've got no fuel pressure. If they're pushed out, you've got fuel pressure. Um, and then obviously you can check and make sure that the fuel pressure is correct. Again, because the fuel pressure regulation is taken care of in the tank. Um, if that gets blocked for whatever reason, so you've got full pressure running to there, you can actually come back and you can feel this on here. Now it is a bit of a experience thing, but if you come to the back here, you should be able to ever so slightly press these screws down with your finger. If you can't and it's absolutely rock solid hard, probably something wrong with your return and you're not regulating fuel pressure and you're just pumping the whole whatever eight bar whatever it is from the fuel pump in there okay and hopefully that's nice and simple and straightforward for you dan nice and easy to fit so what we're going to do now is we're going to get this all unplugged get it in a box and get it off to you and like i said we'll leave the pictures of what it looks like and how this ecu box is going to end up looking like when it gets to you when it's not adapted um, and yeah the other pictures as well and for everybody else that's watching if you've got any questions please feel free fire us a comment below find us on phoenix engine management on facebook but thanks for watching guys and we'll see you again later bye bye <laughs>